Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Anton, this is Elite Dangerous Horizons. I'm out here in the middle of a mission. The objective is to courier some data packets from this planet here to another planet entirely. The destination isn't too many jumps away, so it doesn't take too long to get there, which is fortunate. Unfortunately though, the pay for the mission is fairly low, but I'm not too worried because when I get to my destination, I'm going to search the bulletin board for something a bit more interesting and a bit more rewarding, I hope. This then is Nessie Prospect. No idea if it has any relationship to Loch Ness, but probably not. The gravity on this planet is fairly low, making the landing process that much easier. Now it's a relatively small colony here, you can see it only has a few landing pads. Now it's my belief, although I haven't fully tested it out, that some of these areas don't have the large landing pads, meaning that you won't be able to come here with the larger ships. Now you may have seen in my other video, the tour of the solar system, that the planet Mercury has a very large outpost on it, or coming on for city size, Ehrlich City. I haven't actually seen any other colonies of that sort of size yet, although I do know they are out there in the game, they do seem to be somewhat exceedingly rare. So what's nice then is that the bulletin board does offer surface based missions. You can get missions that go from space stations down to planets or from planet to planet or any combination thereof. The unfortunate side effect is that Frontier still insist on missions being a relatively low payout and thus not really enticing players to want to do them. So whilst these missions do get players out there, they do get us around the galaxy, they're not necessarily worthwhile in terms of the amount of money that you're going to make. And let's face it, how many times are you really going to want to do the same old courier mission for a low payout? Hopefully then, at some point in the future, we get some sort of equivalent to the high paying smuggling missions we had a few patches back. In a somewhat rarity a turn of events, this bulletin board was completely empty, but at least now we got the option of getting into the SRV and having a drive around. Now whilst on the subject of missions still, Horizons does have the chained missions that are introduced into patch 1.5, but they still remain the career missions, just simply moving data packets from A to B, from B to C and then C to D, before the mission finally tells you that you've got to return to the original starting point in order to collect your reward. So whilst that's good framework for the upcoming chained missions, they still aren't fully implemented yet it would seem. At any rate, whilst these colonies don't seem that large from the air, when you're driving around to them in the SRV, they really do seem that much larger. It just goes to show what the sense of scale can do when you're high up in the air. All these places are protected by large turrets. You can see them there on the left, they're anti-ship weapons, and for the ground, they're protected by these sentries here. Thought I'd have a bit of fun and try and jump it, only to be issued with a server warning the moment I got over the top of it. The boosters really do allow you to do some interesting things, some more of which you'll be able to see a little bit later in this video. So my plan then was to head out here into the desert or whatever you want to call it and try and find some more materials. I don't have a particularly huge stock of them, although the beta is soon coming to an end, I guess it's still worthwhile filling up just in order to see what they're all about. You never know whether I'm going to need some repairs or a refuel during the, the next few days. When Horizons finally goes live, I will certainly be driving around quite a lot on planets in order to fill up as much on resources as possible. I will then use them for injectors into the FSD in order to increase my jump range for the deep space exploration videos. A pretty neat feature that will hopefully get me out deeper into space that much quicker, but it's yet to be seen how long those resources will take to collect and how often I'll be able to use them. Anyway, in my previous video, you may remember seeing me in a wing. Now, I didn't show too much of what we got up to there, but I've since edited together some footage for you to watch. So, I'm going to go quiet for a bit, let you have a look at that, and I'll be right back after.
seeing anything in the extreme dark on planets so far it seems to be a relatively rare occurrence as I've said in previous videos, generally speaking, the ambient light seems to be very high. So it's quite rare to get to a planet like this, where you can see one of the outposts lit up like this. It makes them look very large, very, very much like cities, and is a lovely light sight to see. Unfortunately, this wasn't one of those outposts that have all the street lamps around, the lamps on the ground highlighting where you can go. But nonetheless, it was pretty well lit up. Until that is, you leave the settlement. If you go out here without any lights on, it's almost pitch black. All you can make out is the horizon there and the separation between the ground and the stars. Pretty much no idea what you're going to run over or run into. And it would probably make for a pretty crazy race, especially if all you've got to follow is your opponent's tail lights. Heading off deeper into space then, I had a particular destination in mind. This isn't that destination, but it was on the way and this one got my attention quite quickly because it's very near to the local star, just seven light seconds in fact. And although this isn't one of the massive stars, it was large enough to hang impressively on the horizon. Now, there's no way I could come to a planet like this without having a bit of a drive around. Unfortunately, quite quickly, I come across a point of interest. So rather than just driving around randomly, I thought I'd head out toward that. Now, you may remember previously me mentioning that that some of the point of interest seem to have more variety to them and whilst that is perhaps true there's still far too many of these damn wrecks and yet again full of clothing nonetheless now this may change come release it's quite possible that frontier on the release day could add in a load of new points of interest perhaps they're just something that they didn't want us to see or spoiled during the beta phase and I've still yet to see any points of interest that even remotely resemble what Frontier showed us during the promotional period of the game. At any rate, this was a planet well worth visiting and it has some lovely scenery here. If you're an explorer, it's a place worth stopping off at and it's not that far away from the inhabited bubble of human space. At this point anyway, it was time to move on to my ultimate destination, which of course was the one of the systems that Frontier displayed in their recent Horizons release trailer. If you've seen that trailer, you probably wouldn't have failed to notice that right near the start of the trailer, within the first minute or so, there's this lovely purple planet with these lovely purple rings and a huge big lava planet in the background. So I decided to travel there because I wanted to check it out in person. Now unfortunately the planet isn't anywhere near as purple as the trailer actually shows, but nonetheless this is probably the most unique location I've so far seen in Horizons. Now on my journeys into deep space, especially into the galactic core, I've seen a whole bunch of really interesting places and some of them I just can't wait to get back to to try out from the surface. The lava planet in the background there is something we can't land on at the moment in Horizons, but it is part of the Horizons expansion, lava planets that is, of volcanism, so we should be able to land there at a later point in 2016. Now at this point I was so intent on taking in all the visuals here that I hadn't taken notice of the fact that I was actually on a two gravity planet. Now this isn't too bad, but it does have quite an effect on your ship. Listen to this. You can actually hear the structure of the ship creaking and groaning under the pressure. After a while sightseeing, it was time to settle down on the surface of the planet and check out one of the local points of interest. Now, you can pretty much guess what I was hoping it wouldn't be, just as you could probably guess what it actually did turn out to be. Yet another wrecked ship, not a full ship, just a few debris, and this time an occupied escape pod with another canister over in the background here, which ultimately turned out to be some narcotics. I kind of feel sorry for the person stuck there in the escape pod, but at the end of the day, the rewards for these objects just aren't worth picking them up for. Nevertheless though, this is an absolutely gorgeous planet, so I'm gonna head out and spend a load more time having a look around it. Because whilst not all points of interest are actually all that interesting, there are still some absolutely wonderful features on these planets. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.